Hi guys, so this is the GTX 285 in the Retro PC with the Q6600 and 4 gigabytes of 1066 uh, DDR2 RAM and the ODG2 ZS uh, sound card. So the plan is to replace the thermal paste uh, on the GPU and see if it improves the temperatures or not. In 3D marks it stayed around 80 degrees but after two hours of uh, Skyrim gameplay it just went up to 84 and if the FPS rates going really high like uh, above 75 or 80 or something which is really great compared to the 14 and 24 of the previous card the HD 20 600 XT it's really impressive and I set the settings from low to medium right now but I think I can put some settings even higher I'll test it later because now I'm trying to replace the thermal paste here I believe I will make some short videos and maybe use a software to put them all together and show you the process of disassembling uh, the card or if I can do it really quickly I might um, I might show you the process right now or part of it but maybe it would be too boring so yeah make a few videos and um, and I will show you how to do it so I will remove these screws and then show on the card and then I will show you what's the next step okay okay so here is the card and what I did first is uh, that I removed these uh, four screws from the DVI ports then remove all of these large ones from the back plate and there are two extra screws in the, in the back I will show you in just a moment and also there are these uh, blue painted screws I think it's for the warranty or something and because if you screw them out you remove of this blue thing then and maybe that will cause you to lose your warranty but it's an old car so no worry about that so removing these screws then the two small ones which is not on all of the the same type of cards it's just for this EVGA card and you can move this back part a little and then unscrew all these many large screws and they are the small ones and I was worrying about to break the card apart because it was still holding together really well and finally it just uh, came off and I really hope I haven't damaged the PCB at all or anything yeah I'm pretty sure I'm not then you can just flip it off and I think the next step would be to so remove the fan header this connector here and then you can separate the PCB and let's check out what we have I used some air to remove the dust uh, forehand but let's see what we have here <laughs> just look at here maybe it's a bit blurry okay that's fine these things here are all dust gathered <laughs> And you're not able to blow this out if, if you are not using, if you are not disassembling the card. And let's see the thermal paste. It's it used to be like you know this uh, sticky stuff. You can smooth it around and everything. But here this is like stone or something. It's a really old paste, and it's not not effective anymore. And we have. Yeah, these are heat pads for the RAM. I'm really happy these are not the white ones because those are just tearing apart and become useless if you disassemble a card. 
uh, but these are really nice and still hot a lot of memory chips you're not seeing that many in other cards most of the cards because you know for the 512 bit bus um, you actually need many smaller memory chips um, to do this so, yeah that's high bandwidth uh, yeah memory chips again and there is an extra chip uh, yeah I think they were not able to put the RAM deck into the chip <laughs> because it's just ridiculously huge so they put the RAM deck and as I think the video codec as well into a separate chip uh, yeah and we have here the two the three-way uh, SLI connectors and you can see dust here as well a lot and around the GPU you see this kind of dusty parts um, horrible and this paste also old it's just like dust or, or stone or something <laughs> it's it's a huge GPU it's it's amazing to see I think this this assemble is, is really an interesting topic <laughs> so I hope you will enjoy this video so what I will do is to clean this dust maybe blow it away uh, use some tool to, to clean this properly use alcohol or some other um, liquid to remove the thermal pest for all of this and if I find it I have uh, yeah this is a cooler master high performance uh, thermal paste and I will use this to replace to replace it on the GPU and let's see if it will improve anything so ideal temperatures are 55 on the GPU and 84 is kind of the highest it can reach but it's not uh, louder than the Fidelity CPU cooler so the noise levels are okay but I think it's a bit hot and it's a um, old car like it's released in uh, 2009 so it's like um, eight years old so it needs some refreshing so thank you so much for watching and I will continue after the cleaning process so I have uh, cleaned the PCB and now it looks like new also removed the thermal paste and there is the huge GPU with the NVIDIA logo looking really nice also started to clean the actual cooler removed the dust from all around and also cleaned the scoper plate which is really smooth uh, so it's glorious but there are there were many small little screws of different types and I had to remove them as well so these are the screws for this heatsink and these all are the other screws holding this car together and these are just for fixing it into the PC case so the next step will be to remove this aluminium part from here and see what's beneath it and this is just a small and it's not small but really light plastic shroud and just a minimal amount of dust you can see all these plates here okay let's flip the card and see how many dust we have so as you can see the blowing out was able to clean most of it but around the heat pipes there is still a dust in the around the fan right here it's it's more of it so uh, you can see there is one two three heat pipes and one going down there as well um, no, it's real decent <laughs> it feels like the XLR cooler the Pesa one from the 9800 GT it's just smaller in this blower fan which is actually really really quiet 
it's good. So I will clean this part and reassemble the card. I might make a little video about applying the thermal paste or just show how I do it for a large GPU like this. So that's it for now. Okay, so I have uh, cleaned the heatsink as well. It's now good as new. Cleaned the fan as well. Removed all the dust from every piece. And it's now looking gorgeous. So here's the PCB heatsink and this little plastic shroud. And now I'll show you how I apply thermal paste in such a large, G large GPU. So please hold it. Good. So generally, if I am doing a CPU pasting, I just put a little bigger like drop in the middle of it and it will spread around and that's good. But in case of such a large uh, GPU, I'm using this X method. I believe you already knew it. And like in this kind of a star shape. I'm not connecting the star in the middle because in the middle it will get to the thermal place from every direction. So basically it should be enough. I'm just adding some small portion scale. It's not, not metallic or non-metallic uh, thermal place so even if it's spread outwards on the sides it will not affect anything because uh, it will not traverse electricity. So this is the thermal pasting part. I will try to be quick on the assemble not to put dust on it. So I will just uh, put it back here very soon. Not sure we'll capture the whole process. And yeah, it should be go down here. Okay. So basically, I will reassemble the card and then then show you the final result here. So thank you so much for watching again. So the video card is nice, clean, and hold again back in the retro PC and let's play pray it will boot up once again. You can hear this loud sound is the CPU cooler, the fatality one. It starts loud then the PVM will actually work and as the BIOS boots it will become much quieter and okay it's it's strange but I think that this is because of the strange BIOS of the GPU it's Mac edition and it somehow resets itself um, in a PC and uh, it takes a lot to actually boot in and <laughs> I hope it will after all it should just uh, boot soon. Oh, that was the light. And yeah, it's it's on. And now it's much more quieter. This fatality cooler will never be actually quiet. But this is the loudest sound. And even if the GPU is fully loaded, it won't become any any more noisy, any louder. So. <sighs> not used to show you this Windows XP starting process but this time I just want to show you every little detail so the CPU is nice and fast and the PC boots up uh, quite nicely even if it's not containing any SSDs it's just nice only 134 megabytes of RAM <laughs> it's just amazingly low this is Windows XP 32-bit <laughs> no many processes like in Windows 7 or Windows 10 it's just the best operating system so far
or at least in some regards. Only supporting DirectX 9. I'm not connecting any internet or network to this PC, so I don't need wireless protection or anything. I'm not putting external software from internet, so it is nice. Let's leave some time to actually become hotter and see what we have. The 55 nanometer technology, uh, GPU size, it's, it's quite, quite large, 470 square millimeter. 240 unified shader codes, 32 ROPs, 80 texture units. It's actually running in a higher setting. It's only showing this because it's using some energy efficient shit. I'm not so sure how uh, it works. And usually it gives some stress to the GPU and it will uh, rise the PC Express bus speed. It looks like it's not really working, but there is some hint it's it's not. Um, so it's not a problem. Actually, it should be much higher, or it is already. I'm not sure. It used to be at 16. Okay, we have pixel texture fill rate, 512 bits GDR3, uh, GDDR, uh, one gigabytes of memory, and all the base course we don't have direct compute actually it should have direct compute 4.0 but it's only showing the 5.0 capability and we have physics and CUDA so just some stress in the GPU and it's now 60 now PCB 40 it will not show the idle temperature but if you see here it started at 44 which is much better than 50 which was before, so I consider it nice. Not sure it, uh, I can close it. So let's just uh, place Skyrim um, using this uh, MSI Afterburner tool here and lock the frame rate at 60. It will avoid Skyrim to crash or anything because of the high frame rates and the uh, low power supply. Because, yeah, I'm just <laughs> around 100 watts under the minimum specification for this GPU but it wasn't an issue for 3D Mark or Skyrim so far except if the frame rates are going high above in Skyrim. I removed the video, the badass, the logo because it's just annoying to sit every time you want to load up the game. So this is Skyrim, the original version and now it's not on low, it's on medium. Uh, medium textures, everything set to medium, that uh, simple medium preset and it looks much much nicer, we have lights, we have nice lights, point lights and stuff, uh, shadows and, and uh, crisper textures uh, and it's good. So let's take a look, we are running at stable 60 FPS except the loadings yeah, it's, it's glorious in the GPU usage is just around 50%, which is good for us. It could go higher to 100% or, or 99 percentage with 80 or 90 frames per second, but it will just apply.